Hello guys, in this video we will see how to create or set up AWS RDS Aurora for MySQL 8. So, first connect to AWS console, then select the region from this list, then click on services, then click on database, then click on Aurora and RDS. Then click on DB instances, then click on create database. Then select the creation method. I am going with standard create. Then engine options. See here engine type. I am going with Aurora MySQL compatible. Okay. So then scroll down. Then select the version. See here we have the versions 8.0.39. Once you selected version, if you want to enable this RDS extended support, select the checkbox. It is up to you. Then templates. See here we have the production dev or test but for aws rds for mysql we will have the filter as well okay then db cluster identifier here we have to give the name so i am giving aws aurora mysql 8039 okay then credential settings see this is the master username okay if you want to give like root or any other thing you can give so remember this master username then credential management i want to use self-managed then if you want to auto generate password click on here or provide the password and see here the password must satisfy this constraint it, it must be eight, at least eight printable characters and it cannot contain these symbols okay so keep in mind and provide the password Confirm the same. Then cluster storage configuration. See here we have the <coughs> IO optimized run Aurora standard. See this is the cost effective pricing. Okay, I am going with IO optimized. Then instance configuration. See by default it has selected memory optimized classes. But if these are two large configurations, so I am going with burstable and burstable this is the least instance type 2 cpus and 4 gigabytes type. then availability and durability if you want create aurora replica then you have to select this one i don't want okay then come down connectivity compute resource if you want to connect to an easy to compute resource you have to select i don't want network network type ip before then create new apc because i don't have any apcs in this region that's why it is showing it is not showing in this drop down okay then db sub subnet group i don't have anything so it will create the new one if you have an existing one it will show in the drop down list public access select s then vpc security group or firewall choose existing one or create new i'm going with the existing one so it is the default one the availability zone i'm going with select any one of them rds proxy i don't want then additional configuration see this is the default port for the mysql server then read replica forward i don't want to forward so i'll select it tags i'm not going to provide database authentication see here we have the iam database authentication and kerberos authentication then monitoring see we have only one option that is database insights i want to go with this dev or test then see here we have the both database insights advanced run standard okay so it is up to you based on your requirement but i'm going with how you are optimized scroll down next retention period see minimum is seven days and maximum is 24 months okay aws kms key i am not going to i am going with the defaults remaining also defaults os metric see if you want to export these logs you can select like so, show log slow query log or instance log etc if you want to enable enhanced monitoring you have to select the checkbox if you don't want i'll select it okay it is up to you then 
if you want to turn on this DevOps guru, you have to select the checkbox. I don't want additional configuration. If you want to create initial database, that is, it will create a database. So I want to create database name as bank. Then backup retention period. We have minimum one and max means 35 days. So if you want to copy tax also, you can select enable encryption. And if you want to enable backtrack, select here. If you want to enable auto minor version upgrade, you can select the checkbox. If you don't want, unselect it. And maintenance window, if you want to choose maintenance window, select here. I don't want. So if you want to enable delayed production, you have to select the checkbox. See, this is the estimated cost per month. Also review these settings one more time. And if you are okay with all the settings, then click on create database. Close this one. See now it is creating the AWS Aurora MySQL 8.0.39. See successfully created. Click on this. See this is the cluster. Click on this instance. Then see here it populated the. And if you want to see the connection details, click on here. See we have the master data, master password, and this is a master username. Okay, let me close this one. Now. Wait a moment until endpoint is pop populated. So we must wait until this to available. In meantime, open MySQL Logbench. If you want to install MySQL Logbench on Windows or Linux operating systems, search for my YouTube channel how to install. See, we have the MySQL Logbench. Okay. Wait until the status to be available. See, now status change it to configuring. See here it populated endpoint and port number. So click on this copy button to copy this entire endpoint. Then go to MySQL Logbench. Then click on this plus button to create the connection. Then provide the name AWS Aurora MySQL. Then in place of this first time, paste that endpoint. Username is admin. So username is admin and we want to copy the password. Click on this copy button. Go to here, admin, then click password, store in vault, then provide the password, then click on OK, then click on test connection. This will throw error. I will show you the error and resolution. See if you receive like this not responding or blank page, no action. See, we are unable to connect. Okay, even if you try to click on test connection, nothing is happening. Okay, so go to Aurora instance, close this one, then now click on this default security, see we got the error but failed to connect MySQL, okay click on OK, now click, right click on the security group, open link in new tab, go to here, then click on security group ID, then click on edit inbound rules, then click on add rules, then select custom IP, then select MySQL. MySQL or Aurora. Then select the source, any IP range or select your own IP. Then click on save roles. See it is success. Now go to here and click on store in vault. Then provide the password. Then click on OK. Then click on test connection. This time we will be able to connect. See successfully made connection to this host name. This is the endpoint name of the our AWS Aurora MySQL. Click on OK. Click on OK. Now click on this one. See successfully connected. See we have created database MySQL bank. If you want to create database, right click create schema. Then provide the database name. Test. Then click on apply. This is the way. Or don't save. You can create, provide the comments here. Okay. And if you want to create users, click on admins. Then click on users and roles, users and privileges. See these are the users that comes with MySQL installation. And this is the master user. If you want to create user, you have to click on add account. Okay. So I'm not going to create. Now if you want to modify, set the password for root account. Just go to here. Here we have to provide the password of root account. Then you have to click on continue. Okay. Then you have to apply, then it will ask to apply the changes immediately. Okay. 
so that's, that's so that is the way so go back click on actions so if you want to reboot this mysql mysql aurora aws mysql aurora click on reboot or if you are not using anymore delete it i strongly recommend if you are not using delete it so charges are based on usage it is up to you so we don't have the option to stop only we have the option to delete so in this video we have seen how to create or set up aws aurora for mysql then we have connected from mysql workbench okay for more aws or devops or mysql tutorials please subscribe my channel thank you